Boy, that is uh, not good for business. Welcome back everyone to the vlog. Today, before we get started, I just wanted to update you guys on some stuff. So I got a new phone, which means I have a new camera. It wasn't necessarily <laughs> by choice, uh, but I did kind of capitalize on that and uh, decide to uh, get a new phone instead of just replacing the screen on my old one. So hopefully uh, you guys will notice some difference in the quality. So let me know in the comments below what you think of that. Also, there's going to be a name change coming up soon with the channel, kind of giving myself more of a feel and a title kind of as a brand. Also coming out with a new album. So I actually produce music, if some of y'all didn't know, uh, under a title. So yeah, look out for that name change. I'm hoping to add some themes and eventually come out with some merch, so hopefully you guys are a little excited for that. I know I'm certainly excited about doing that myself, uh, but yeah, we're going to work on the Jeep, and the goal by the end of this video is to get the thing started. Alright, welcome back to the garage, everyone. Today, we are going to try to get the Jeep running, and I've got a couple new things to put in it. To start off, there's a couple small things I did off camera. I put some antifreeze in here but I don't have enough in the shop to fill this thing up all the way. So I'm gonna have to go and pick some more up if I'm gonna take this thing on a drive. Also, I got the air filter on, and this is actually an air to oil air filter. So there's what it looks like. So basically, the air comes through the top of the air filter, goes kind of past the oil and uses the oil to catch any dirt that's in the air. And uh, I've never seen anything like it before, but uh, yeah. Actually, another thing I did off camera was I took apart this starter switch again because I actually put it back together wrong. The key mechanism attaches to a plate that has two contacts on it. And those contacts switch between another plate that attaches to the entire electrical system in the Jeep. When I put it back together originally, I put a spring between the two contact plates, so they never actually touched, and that's why the key wasn't working. So I had to end up putting the spring behind the plate, which goes in an indentation where the key switch itself goes, and it actually presses that plate against the other contact plate. And now, when I turn the key, it works. So now we have a cranking engine, which is definitely a plus. And check this out too, it actually cranks. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be sticking these here AC Delco spark plugs in and putting on the new spark plug wires that I got uh, from Thundercore. Now they do look a little bit small, but hopefully that's just for fitting reasons so they don't have any kind of water leaks or anything, but yeah, I'm going to stick these spark plugs in and stick the coils on and see what happens. And these are still a 13 16 socket size. And to put the coils on the distributor to the spark plugs, the number of cylinders is 135 and 246 and the distributor is actually numbered right here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way around. Fits good. I put the wrong one on there. That was close. Ah, uh, yes, here we are uh, very, very professional, very, Upright, you do things properly. Yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. The elegance. Oh, wait, these these are crossed. Ah, unacceptable. Yes, yes, very bougie indeed. Ah, uh, yes, yes, high class. Ah, uh, yes. That's it, I'm gonna double check everything, and then I uh, think we should be good to try to start her up. All right, well, went through everything again, and it all looks good, and uh, words cannot express how insanely nervous I am right now, but we're gonna go ahead and hit her with our best shot. So, let's see what happens.
Is the fuel pump working? Do you know? It's a mechanical fuel pump, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Electronic. Do you have to pump it or anything to make it? Uh, I'll see. Um, I think it probably needs a little bit of time to let the fuel get drawn into the system. Okay. I don't know if I need to prime it or put fuel in the bowl. Do we have to shoot something into the car like those guys on TV? <laughs> Maybe. Uh. Just give it a... You have starter fluid? Brake cleaner. Oh, same thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so upon opening the box, I noticed it said use with res external resistor. And this part that I tried to bypass is right there. And I couldn't figure out what it was, so I pulled it off and just used some copper wires to bridge it. Uh, and so I asked the guys at the auto parts store, have you seen something like this before? They said no. So I looked up 66 Jeep resistor and something exactly like this came up. So. I'm gonna see if this actually works. I'm gonna put this in, check for spark again on the stock coil pack and see if I can save myself an extra 40 bucks or so. There it is. It took me a while to find this screw. It's a massive sheet metal screw. I don't see a spark. No spark. Pulling his nose off. She's real tight on there, isn't she? Well, as you can see, there was no luck with replacing the coil pack, so I'm gonna wait for the new resistor to show up in the mail, slap that on, and try again. So we'll see what, I will see you guys then. What's up, everyone? It's the next morning, and I did a little bit of research last night on distributor timing. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this and make sure that it's right, because as far as I know, this distributor looks relatively new and it may not have been installed correctly, and who knows if it was even installed while the Jeep was running. So I'm gonna figure that out right now. So I'm reading out of this here manual, and uh, what it says to do is take off this cover, and uh, it says to rotate the crankshaft in a forward direction, and continue rotation until both of the valves of the number one cylinder are completely closed, and the timing mark on the vibration damper is aligned with the five mark of the timing indicator. Uh, yeah. So I went ahead, looked around, started scraping some grease off of stuff, and bingo, found something. So the service manual said to crank it until both of the first valves, uh, first cylinder valves were closed. And after that, there should be a timing mark that you can line up with the five on there. And bingo, there be a timing mark right there. So it says to line that up with the five, so that's what I'm gonna do. So according to the manual, this should now be lined up for cylinder one to fire. So I'm going to make sure that this whole assembly is loose enough to turn by hand with heavy pressure. And then I'm going to put this so that this is lined up with, uh, with cylinder number one on the distributor. And 
apparently you're supposed to do something else about advancing the timing. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and read that again. I am still learning this, guys, but uh, yeah, this is all new to me. I'm just figuring this out, you know. I'm going to hook all these coils back up. Alright, so this is odd. I'm actually getting a consistent resistance reading from that resistor right there. Give it another shot and see if there's any difference after checking the distributor. What I think is the issue is this contact from the coil to the distributor uh, never really fits well. So I'm going to see if I can try to get a better fit inside of there and see if that solves our issue. So, it's the distributor. Something's up with the distributor. It's gotta be. Sir, please, would you, uh, would you spark? I would appreciate. Well, I think I found the issue. If you look closely here, it looks like we've got some pretty corroded points. So, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of fine grit sandpaper, maybe some cleaner and Make sure those are nice and clean. Just with a little bit of solvent, look at all that just came off of those points. That is pretty nasty. Well, got the points cleaned up, got it all back together. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna assume that those points are just really corroded and need to be replaced, um, or they're just worn out. So, if this doesn't go, I'm gonna lose my mind. Now, hold on just a second. Is that? Ayo, that spark. Looks like we're uh, a little down on voltage now from cranking. I was having a hard time focusing there, but uh, yeah, it says the battery's below 50% again. So I'm gonna let her charge, go get some food, and then come back and try again. Let's see, I don't know. Basically what I'm trying right now is just messing around with the timing, you know, back and forth, seeing if the spark is just a bit too early or a bit too late, so. All right, now it's way advanced. Let's see what happens. That was fire. That, it's on fire, Walter. Blow it out, blow it out. It's, okay. okay. It... Oh. oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's alive! <laughs> That's a good birthday present, Walter. I'll take that. You like that? Yeah. Satisfied? That was a pretty amazing. Pretty dang happy. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking that was maybe the air filter. It is. Oil in the air filter? Mm -hmm. Wow, I've never seen anything like that. Neither have I. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought it was a stupid question. Evidently, it's not. Uh, you're gonna, oh my gosh, you're gonna back it out? Yeah. Oh my gosh.
Boy, something's sure dripping. heater core hose. Very nice, very nice. Oh yeah, she purrs. She purrs all right. Those beautiful dual exit exhaust pipes. I mean, she leaks, but she's dripping, you know, she's dripping. Basically, there's a couple things going on with the Jeep. Uh, first off, it runs. That's freaking amazing. Um, but there's a couple little things here and there uh, just kind of showing its age that need some attention. Mainly here by the heater box, these connections leak pretty frequently. And I have a couple of paper towels down there to kind of soak some of that antifreeze up. But that's pretty much one of the main issues with it. And then another really serious one is... That brake right there, yeah, it's not really supposed to be covered in fluid. So the brakes only really work on one side of it while you're driving. And another small thing is, uh, you know, the gears need a little encouragement to go where they need to. But other than that, she's running good. So I'll go ahead and take you guys for a spin so you can see how she runs. Ooh, hot seats. Oh yeah. Oh, she's a ripper, all right. But no power steering uh, is interesting for a little baby like me. Manageable. If you just uh, stop me on a little baby, you know. The timing may still need some adjustment to be optimal, and the vacuum advance line isn't hooked up, but it starts up good, runs good, you know, I could, I could complain more. Well, thank you guys for joining me uh, in this journey to get the Jeep running, and hopefully in the next video we can get those brakes sorted out, and hopefully the coolant as well. You know, it could be one or the other, but I'm going to try to get both in the same video for you guys. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.